Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another monthly freezer meal prep. We are going to be tackling some baking today and I am so excited. As usual, I have a variety of different styles of eating and baking. I have some dairy-free options, I have gluten-free options, I have regular recipes, so if you're fine with the sugar and flour, I've got that. I've also got some keto-friendly options. I love to mix it up and give you guys a lot Lot of ideas especially if you are working with different types of eating or allergies so this first recipe is definitely a family friendly one and does not cater to the allergies but it is so delicious my girls cannot keep their hands out of these and they are a cookies and cream pudding cookie when I saw this recipe online I knew I had to make it and I've actually had the ingredients around for a while so today I decided to go ahead and tackle it and I definitely think I'll be making them again in the future and then possibly doubling the recipe usually whenever I make a recipe for the first time I don't like to go ahead and double it just because I don't know if everyone will enjoy it or not, but this was one we really enjoyed. And I love making cookies for the freezer because they freeze so well. And you all know that I've even done cookie dough. That's another thing that freezes really well. So you could actually make this dough up and then just make it into balls and put it in the freezer and bake the portion sizes that you want at one time. So the recipe is relatively simple. You use an Oreo cookie pudding mix, you've got some of your normal cookie ingredients, and then you put white chocolate chips and crush up Oreos into the batter. So you're done mixing it up, it almost looks like ice cream, and right at the end I went ahead and just put my hands in and just mixed the chunky ingredients together that way. I would love to hear in the comments your best butter melting hacks when you want to soften butter really quickly. I saw this one and to be honest, I don't think I did it right or it didn't work very well, but that's to put a hot glass over the stick of butter and let it sit. Let me know your advice in the comments. This next recipe is gluten-free, it's also keto-friendly, and it is some cinnamon roll bread. And I actually baked it up in my little containers that you all know I use all the time. They have green lids, and I decided to go ahead and make it in that because I felt like it might give me a better sized loaf because a lot of times when you make keto or gluten-free bread, it can kind of be a little flat, so I thought this would work out better and it really worked perfectly. This bread is not very sweet. The only sweetener is in the like swirl part that you layer in with the nutmeg and the cinnamon. So if you enjoy a less sweet bread with like some butter on top of it, you will really love this one. And it was very simple to put together. It has baking powder in it and um, it just was easy to whip up and dump into the pans.
I want to thank Thrive Market for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Thrive Market is an online membership based grocery store on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable to everyone. You are guaranteed savings. You can shop thousands of best selling organic foods and natural products below traditional retail prices. Find a better price elsewhere and they will match it. You can get anything from organic kids products, wine, meat, seafood, and frozen veggies shipped right to your door. Before I even get into this haul, I have to say I have never received a package so well packaged. It was literally rolled in this. If it was something that could leak, they have a plastic piece that is completely sealed around the object. So all of the stuff that you see that could leak, it will like, it could never cause an issue and damage the whole box which I think is absolutely amazing. I think everywhere should package their things like that. They just do an incredible job with that. So I've used Thrive Market for years and I love them so much. They have all kinds of things that I normally would not find. I don't have a very good health food store near me and so this is a really great place to find literally everything and anything. I have some Stevia sweetened chocolate chips. I'm really excited to try out this brand. They are a zero sugar peached iced tea and I I love half and half. This is a mayo that I love and use a lot. So they have a lot of brands that you probably already use. The variety of things that they have is crazy. They have skincare and they have, this is like a personal care wash and obviously things for feminine hygiene and they have home cleaners. I'm really excited about trying this. I first of all love Nut Pods brand, but this one here is toasted marshmallow, which sounds so delicious. You can go in and literally shop by your eating style. So if you want gluten free or dairy free or if you want um, paleo or anything like that you will find it there. These are some cashews that are everything bagel seasoning on them. This brand, I've purchased it at the store. But it's just so nice to be able to get everything in one spot. And then these are some little mini cookies and then they were running a promo where they put in a free item in your cart and you could choose what that item was out of a couple different choices. So I chose this Chomps beef sticks. I love having beef sticks on hand. Can't wait to dig in to some of this stuff and use it. Thrive Market has a monthly membership option for $9.95 a month and a yearly membership option for $59.95 and that's the one I personally use. That's only $5 a month. So click on the link in my description box or go to thrivemarket.com backslash Adeline's Kitchen to get 40% off your first order and a free gift. All right, back to baking. So I was ready to dump the bread batter into the pans and I'm out of cooking spray right now. So I just dumped a little bit of avocado oil in the bottom and then I just kind of layered the dough and then put the swerve and cinnamon mixture in between. And of course, if you're just going for gluten-free and you're not wanting a sugar uh, alternative with this, you could totally use regular sugar and it would work out just the same. Don't these look just fantastic? And to be honest, I was a little bit impatient and didn't wait to slice it until it was cooled, so it was a little crumbly. But either way, I felt like it rose to a great height. So next, I took a cleaning break, and just like in the last video, I want to remind you to clean as you go. I wasn't very good about it this day, but a lot of times I stop and clean dishes in between so I don't end up with a mess at the end. I want to take a minute and touch on having your kids help in the kitchen. Also, if you are a mom and you have done this and had your children help in the kitchen a lot, I would love to hear your tips and tricks or little jobs that you gave them in the comments below because I'm looking for more things to have the girls help with. I want them to grow up and know how to cook for their families one day and they love this one-on-one -on -one time. So we are whipping up some homemade granola bars and this recipe is really awesome because it's gluten-free and it's dairy free as well and it also has a little added protein because you do put some almond flour in it and the girls really enjoyed it it does not have any sugar so it's sweetened with honey and i just think it's a home run and we'll probably be using it again and being able to add in other mix-in ingredients like cranberries and things like that 
This time around, I did just put in the chocolate chips but like I said, I felt like it was such a great consistency. It also didn't make quite as much as I thought, which you'll see here in a minute, but the girls were having so much fun helping me out and dumping in ingredients. So I actually doubled this recipe and as you can see it still only made half the sheet size so the next time I definitely will need to four times the recipe to make a full sheet size. The recipe does call to put it into a 9 by 13 but you all know how much I love making big pans of stuff so that I don't have to make it again for a while and just getting it prepped for the freezer. So these were really fantastic. I just put them into some freezer bags and as always, I encourage you to portion things out for your size family and make sure that it's easy to grab things out. That way things don't go bad if you've pulled out too much out of the freezer. And you can see that I'm on a bit of a strawberry kick in the last prep when I prepped breakfast stuff I did a strawberry baked oatmeal which by the way was amazing so if you haven't seen that video definitely go back and check it out but I decided to make some strawberry scones and these are gluten free and keto friendly and they were really easy to make although I will say you want to follow the instructions really well because you want to actually kind of cut the cream cheese into your almond flour, which means you want it to be nice and flaky. And whenever I dump the batter out here in a second, you will see that you have to press the batter together because it's flaky, but it's kind of a flaky pastry, which is the goal here. Then to top it off, the recipe does have an icing recipe along with it, but I had these white chocolate chips that were sugar-free and leftover from something else, so I went ahead and heated them up with a little bit of coconut oil and made a nice white chocolate drizzle over these, which was really yummy. All right, so this recipe, again, is not very allergen friendly, but it is family friendly, and that's one of our absolute favorite cookies, and that is maple cookies with the homemade maple icing, and I just can't get enough of these. They're so good, and they have a buttermilk that goes into the batter, and it just makes them so delicious. But as always, when I have flops, when I have mistakes in the kitchen, I love to share them with you. And this day, I don't know what happened. Even going back in my footage here and counting my flour, it was correct. I just have no idea what happened. But for some reason, these came out super flat. And normally, they're very fluffy cookies. But either way, they still taste good. And sometimes, you have flops. So if you have something that doesn't turn out well, don't get discouraged. You can definitely still either remake it or you'll maybe be able to figure out what you did wrong the next time. And just because I make YouTube videos doesn't mean that everything always turns out perfectly. In this video, I also did not speed up much of anything. I've gotten comments that you prefer to see things moving in real time. Let me know whether you like it sped up or if you like this style video where it's clips of things moving in real time. Time. So the next thing I did was make up this maple icing and as I was making this I really was thinking about what else I could use this on because it's so delicious and you just cook it up 
Plus, I love this little whisk for things like this. Then you let it cool down so it gets thicker and you can easily put it on top of the cookies. But I think this would be amazing on like some cinnamon sugar muffins or something like that. So maybe in the future, I'll have to come up with something that this would be great on because once it cools, it actually like kind of gets a little bit more hardened on top of the cookie and it's just so yummy. I hope this meal prep inspired you. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I have lots of easy recipes for your family, and I will see you all in my next video.